Welcome to Empowered by Iron, hosted by Dr. Kristen Lander from Fiercely Fueled Nutrition Coaching and Mary Morton from Grad Gains, the online resource for your fitness needs. Together, we are Empowered by Iron. Kristen here. Um, today we are going to talk a little bit about rest days and why they why they are so important. Um, so Mary does online training specifically for strength athletes. So Mary, tell us a little bit about you and our topic for today. Hey, so I run my own online coaching or training um, for strength athletes through gradgains.com. I started training clients when I was about. 18, I got recruited into a gym, and so I've been a personal trainer for quite a few years. Um, and the thing that I wanted to talk to everyone about today was this concept of rest days and why they're so important. Um, when I first started working out, I was definitely a team no days off type of person. I believe that if you wanted it and you know you were willing to do whatever the heck it required of you, which meant going to the gym seven days a week, two hours a day, and doing your workouts, yeah, by your face right there. <laughs> That's what I should have felt. Sounds horrible. But I was of the mindset that this team no days off. People who spent seven days a week in the gym meant that you were committed and that you were making really good gains. You were increasing your strength, which, as we will find out today, is not necessarily true. Um, rest is so important, especially for athletes who spend 10-plus hours a week in the gym. That's just two hours a day, five days a week, right? Right. which is typically what you and I do and what most people would do. Um, rest is so important. Rest yeah. is like, if you don't rest, not only is it taxing on your physical well-being, but also your mental well-being. Like There's a certain point in which you are pushing yourself just a little too far, and we'll get into that in a minute. But today we're going to talk about why rest days. Okay. So you mentioned, um, so like, tell us a little bit about like what happens to your body and like why resting is important for your body. So your body is very interesting. It resides in what we call homeostasis, especially with its energy expenditure. If it has, let's say, X amount of energy, it only has a finite amount, and it can either use that energy to help you push through a workout, to help you get through a workout, and to do your daily activities, or it can use that to repair your muscle, which is why sleeping is important. When you sleep, you're not doing all, you're not running around, you're not trying to do your job, you're not trying to work. So your body's able to repair your muscles. Um, so when it comes to training versus rest days or active days or versus rest days, that energy that you would normally be used for your training in order to break down your muscles and give you the energy to push through your, your workout when you actually are resting, that energy is being put towards rebuilding your muscle fibers and getting those strength gains that you work so tirelessly to get. Yeah, so you're saying that rest is imperative to actually getting stronger. Yes, if you don't rest, you will likely not get stronger. Yeah, that's not what we want. No. Um, so, so, okay, what are the different ways that your body compensates then for the lack of rest? So say you're like team no days off and you never take a day off of the gym. What, what, how does your body compensate for that? So one thing you would probably notice um, is that your appetite has increased. Okay. So if you're used to eating a certain amount of food every day and that typically tends to satisfy you, if you're team no days off, you're going to notice over the weeks that your appetite is increasing. And you're not sure why, because you've been doing the same thing over and over, but now all of a sudden your team no days off, right? So your body's trying to use that extra energy source to help repair you and help keep pushing you, because now it's trying to do two things at once. It's trying to repair your muscles and keep you active. And if you're like most people who are athletes, they also have aesthetic goals. So you're yeah. probably not going to be adding that extra food to your diet. So while your appetite's going to go up, you're not going to be fueling your body. Um, your body also is going to want you to sleep more. So if you're not resting, it's going to want to get some of that energy back by making you sleep. Because when you're asleep, it actually can repair your muscles because you're not doing anything. 
Right. So you'll notice that if your team no days off, you're going to be hungrier, you're going to be you're going to be fatigued, you're going to try to sleep more. And if you are true team no days off, you'll try to push through that. But if you're team science, you'll take a step back and you'll think, why am I hungry all the time? Why am I tired all the time? And that kind of moves us into the next topic, which is overtraining. Now, I don't know if you've ever had the experience of overtraining. I have. And Tell I, us about I always that. take rest days, but I have I did some really intense um some intense training. I'm a master's athlete, so let's say that. So I have a little bit, I think, extra um, rest requirements or recovery requirements than some other people. But um, yeah, I have um, overtrained in the past, and I was like super crabby. Yep. Um, we're just really irritable, tired all the time. Like just drinking so much coffee to try to get through the day. Um, like ravenously hungry yeah yeah so those are all overtraining symptoms all overtraining symptoms and you'll mm -hmm. hear a lot of people say that they're overtrained um but being overtrained is definitely one of those states where you know and it, it i mean it's kind of the only thing in your world at that time because you are so tired mm -hmm. you're so cranky you're so hungry you know i was team no, no days off for a very long time and i remember it was when i switched over to powerlifting and I was really pushing myself. I was going seven days a week, two hour day workouts, trying to do squat, bench, deadlift, tr just trying, you know, trying to push myself in every way. And I remember starting to hate the gym because I was so tired. Oh. I was so hungry and sleepy. And I remember taking three full days off, which, mind you, I've never done ever again, like ever in my whole life. Okay. And I felt amazing afterwards. Amazing. So rest is super important so important absolutely so um uh, one thing i want to talk about like i know you and i have had a conversation where like does overtraining really exist and i always like to use the word under recovery because it's kind yes. of like y your um your like, body just can't keep up your body can't keep up you're not recovering from your workouts you're not able to uh, sleep enough or eat enough or whatever you yeah. can't recover to be able to go back in the gym and do it tomorrow I think you have to put it in perspective too like your body will always be recovering but if you don't ever let it get back to ground zero mm -hmm. you will always be at a disadvantage yeah. so when I say that your your body isn't in a state of recovery or you're not resting enough to let your body recover your body is always trying to recover and repair, but if you don't take a step back and let it get back to ground zero, back to homeostasis, um, you're never going to make the progress that you're wanting to make because it's just it's just playing it's just playing catch up. Yeah. So then, what is what is your recommendation? How do we avoid this overtraining or under recovery? I have rest days, and it all depends on your sport. So. If you're a bodybuilder, you're going to have a different rest day scenario than you would if you are a powerlifter or Olympic lifter or a crossfitter. Um, I've known a lot of bodybuilders who do the eight day method. So they'll go eight days in a row and then take a day off. And that seems to work for them. Um, I know for a lot of crossfitters, they like to go seven days a week. But if they are well trained and well versed, they take at least one full day rest and that has to do a lot with Olympic professional athletes um, and for power lifters usually you see them take if at least one full rest day and then one day that they're going in and doing like accessory movement but not as taxing to their CNS or their their muscles so my recommendation and to avoid overtraining is to always make sure that you're getting enough sleep and just to make sure that you're fueling your body properly and giving it the nutrition it needs to push through all those workouts. Okay. So you mentioned in the beginning that you do online coaching for yep. um, athletes. You do uh, training programs and programming. So what is your recommendation for your athletes for a training, training schedule to rest schedule? Like what does that ratio kind of look like? So it really depends on the athlete, and it depends on what their goals are. So if my athlete, for example, I have a few of them who are more strength-focused, so they're powerlifting, I make them take at least two days, if not three, with the third being more like a lighter active day of rest days a week in order for them to fully recover. But I also have other ones that are more, you know, they're kind of more novice, they're beginners, 
um, and their rest day needs are less than the strength athletes. So it really just depends on the athlete. If you're a beginner, I would say plan for at least one day a week where you take a full rest day. That doesn't mean sitting on the couch. I mean, you can sit on the couch all day if you want, but that just means not going to the gym and not pushing yourself. Um, if you're a more seasoned athlete and you are more into strength and you have different goals than just you know, getting healthy, um, at least two days a week. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I think you're going to set yourself up for a lot of problems in the long run. But like I said, again, it just depends on the athlete. Okay. So, bottom line, <laughs> we need to be resting. Basically, you need to be resting. Okay, that's good. Um, so, Mary, if our listeners have any questions about rest days or training or interested in training programs with you, um, how can they contact you? All right, good question. Um, so, we just launched our site called gradgains.com. Um, I do coaching through that site, and you can contact me um, through Mary at gradgains.com. And if you go to our website, www.gradgains.com slash coaching, um, you can fill a little questionnaire there and we can get you going. But if you any, have any concerns or questions in it, either, you can just shoot me an email, marygradgains.com. Okay. And we also link to your site um, through the Empowered by Iron website. Yes. Yes. You can always find me on the EBI website. Great. Thanks, Mary. If you like what you heard today, please help us connect with other female badasses. Um, we would love if you would leave us a review on iTunes, tell your friends about us, um, visit our website, which is empoweredbyiron.com. Um, you can find each of us on Instagram. Mary is at marymo underscore 92, and Kristen is at Kristen with an I, Lander. Um, future topics will include nutrition, programming and training, mental health, and just general female badassery. Yeah, so let us know what you want to hear. If you have any input, that'd be awesome. Um, and guys, this is Empowered by Iron is, we want it to be a resource and an outlet for women who are finding their confidence, their independence, and their strength through iron. So thank you for listening. Thank you for checking in, and until next time, I'm Mary, I'm Kristen, and this is Empowered by Iron.